Have you ever wondered which makeup colors you should wear? In this 1932 book, Virginia Vincent, the author, explains all. Whether you are redheaded, blonde, brunette, she tells you exactly the colors that you should be wearing. Now in the 1930s, this was all the rage. Every brand talked about color harmony, about making your rouge and your lipstick, everything match with your eye color, your hair color, and even what you would wear and what you would dress like. So I'm already in the redheaded look. I'm gonna explain everything and show you how to do this but also I'm gonna show you a brunette and a blonde and whatever else I can fit in between. I'm Erin Parsons, a makeup artist that is beauty history obsessed. Let's get into this makeup. Before we get into the makeup, this is not my real hair color. I had to go ham on the root touch-up spray in red and I did like a conditioning mask last night that turned your hair a bit more red. So we came up with this color. I am going for a Clara esque style here and we're gonna do the Titian haired beauty and do this color harmony look, but let's get into the eyebrows. Now I have shaved my eyebrows off and gone pencil thin. It was really popular in Hollywood to do this, but not amongst everybody. I will say there are certain stars that love their eyebrows like this and I have followed them. Marlena Dietrich, Anna Mae Wong, Jean Harlow, Nina Mae McKinney, Claudette Colbert. I've really gone for a Jean Harlow effect. In the book, it does say it to allow one inch between your eyebrows. There's a bit more space between mine, again, following Jean, but it also says to tidy up your eyebrows. Not everyone had pencil thin, so you would just tidy them up by tweezing. Don't ever use a razor to shave them, nor scissors to cut them off in a hurry. Flipped eyebrows are decidedly ugly looking. So some stars back then that had a bit more thick brows, if you wanna follow along and you don't want to shave them off. You would see these thicker brows on stars like Carol Lombard, Freddie Washington, Merle Oberon, and Hedy Lamarr. Now I have a lot of cosmetics from the 1930s, so I'm actually gonna show you products from then so you can see how intensely pigmented and how red they were. I am going to use modern products for today. This is a very red cream rouge, so this is gonna work perfectly. But now how to apply it. There are many ways to apply rouge, and I'm gonna put all of these on the screen. There's even contouring on a double chin. You would use like a brown eyeshadow but you can pause and read these and find your face shape and my face shape is going to be how to place rouge on a long oval face I think my face is a long oval face so I want to follow the way that they do this I've taken a single dot onto my fingertip because it's really pigmented I'm gonna follow exactly the placement they say keep it very far away from the nose and high on the cheekbones we're gonna kind of create triangles and then I'll blend everything out max factor actually shows in this 1930s video contouring. So they were contouring back in the 1930s. Marlena Dietrich was really well known for contouring those cheekbones. Also says just to take a very light amount right onto the chin, not as much as you did on the cheeks. I'm gonna go ahead and blend this all out. and I'll be right back. Okay, that is the rouge applied and blended. I don't know, I feel like it kind of makes my face look skinnier, but this is what they say to do. And of course, once you put your powder on, it's gonna look even softer. Now we can do some lipstick. And for the Titian haired beauty, it says don't be afraid of a scarlet lipstick. This lipstick should be carmine and applied not so heavily that it looks artificial, but so skillfully and thoroughly as to make the lips quite red and tempting. Now they did have lip liner back then. They had lip liner, I think, as far back as the 1900s. And they they do talk about how to line your lipstick, how to create the shape for your lips. So if you have fuller lips or if you have thin lips, they literally say you can overdraw. And by the 1930s, that Cupid's bow, tiny 20s mouth was sort of out. You see on like Joan Crawford, Marlena Dietrich, they were sort of overdrawing the top lip. Now I get carried away with this because I'm a child of the 90s. I am going to try to keep it to my natural lips to an extent. So I'm gonna go ahead and line with this Ruby Woo red pencil. And I'm going to use my favorite favorite red, which is Charlotte Tilbury Red Wishes. It takes me a while to line my lips, so I think I'm gonna do the liner off camera, but then I'm gonna show you how they would do lipstick in the 1930s. So I have a lot of these little Max Factor books, and in the 1920s, you would start on your bottom lip and press on top, but by the 1930s, they say to start on the top lip, so make sure the lips are completely dry and trace only the top lip, and then you would just press the lips, Basically by transferring it onto the bottom, you would get a very symmetrical mouth, they say. So once you've transferred from your top to your bottom, you could take your finger and blend the lipstick in, which would make it appear less artificial. It's funny, even in this book, it says your lipstick should match the color of your rouge and your powder. So color harmony was 
everywhere in the 1930s. Okay, I did my best not to overdraw too much, but I don't understand how a red lipstick doesn't look artificial no matter how lightly you apply it. But you know what? I love artificiality. Plastic, fantastic. I think it looks pretty cute, and I love the red with the red hair. Now we're gonna get into the powder. For the Titian hair, they show you it's more of a nude powder. You don't wanna go too pink or too yellow, but don't shun the pink. But basically they say you can mix a yellow powder and a pink powder. I have this pink Tea Leclerc powder right here, and I have a Maybelline Fit Me, which is a lot more on the yellow side here. So I'm gonna mix these two together. As far as application, they don't mention anything about powder in this particular book, but I've seen the movie Cover Girl with Rita Hayworth. Now granted, this was the 1940s. I can't imagine it so different, but they really, you can see it in the scene here, they really put on powder everywhere on the entire face and cover up lips and she anything that's basically greasy so even the eyeshadow they would go over then they would take a brush and they would brush everything off and i do have a replica from besame that you can actually brush the powder off i love using this brush even in my modern day look okay i've mixed the powder together and it does look more nude you see a little bit of the pink on the bottom but when you mix the two at the top it does look a lot more nude. So we're gonna go ahead and apply everywhere but the eyes. In that Rita Hayworth film that I just referenced, they do put it everywhere, but in the 1930s, they often talk about Vaseline on the eyelids, so you would keep the eyelids a bit more shiny. I'm gonna apply it over top of my lipstick lightly too really patted all of that in. I love lots of powder. It just looks so pretty on camera, but I'm gonna take the brush and just lightly brush over everything okay so we're gonna go into the eyeshadow here it says green eyeshadow looks best with a particular color of eyes that go with red hair in the picture it shows like brown hazel eyes and i do have brown hazel eyes so i don't have to put any contacts for this particular hairstyle and color harmony now in the evening if you want to use the green or purple eyeshadow with glints of gold in it so you can see the two different greens here from the 1930s i have one that is a little deeper and one that's very bright i've gone with the deeper one and i've actually matched it to this Mitsuyoshi cream eyeshadow. Okay, I'm starting very softly. <laughs> I don't wanna go too far, because I always go too far, but I'm just gonna apply it with the fingertip, and they say to do it right on the eyelid and make sure that there is light space between the lid and the eyebrow. Looking at some of the old photo play magazine covers, there's eyeshadow, there's color. Definitely wasn't done as heavy as I initially thought it was. That is the green eyeshadow on. It looks really pretty actually with this hair color. Now we can go into mascara, which is what they called mascara back then. Basically mascara was a product that was made for men for their sideburns, for eyebrows, for their hairline, and the product would come in like a cake mascara. And they don't really make brown cake mascara today so I am going to use a modern mascara but technically a mascara like this did not launch until the 1950s from Helena Rubinstein so you would have used the cake mascara you would have either spit into that mascara or you would have wet it with water but a lot of them use spit and they were called a spit black just because of this purpose I'm gonna go ahead and use this Dior mascara and I'm gonna do top and bottom and I'm really gonna load up the eyelashes because if you see Jean Harlow there's a lot of mascara on there. I've told you a million times not to talk to me when I'm doing my lashes. Okay, the brown mascara is on. I added a touch more rouge and my beauty mark, and I love the way this looks. But I do want to apply some false eyelashes, and they do talk about this here about using artificial lashes. Before you acquire artificial lashes, try to grow your own by giving them attention every night and morning, just as regularly as you would brush your teeth. False lashes were patented in 1905, I think, by Nesto Lashes. I have these ITEB strip lashes here. These came out in the 1930s. I can't wait to show you what these look like. I have to try them on. I actually have a couple pairs of these. That's why I want to use them. And even inside this pack, there's actually two pairs of lashes, so we can definitely try one. This literally looks like a spider. They are so curled. They feel like wire. It's really weird. They're not like hair. And the way that they say to apply them is you put the glue on top of your eyelid and then you press them on. Back then they were using spirit gum, which we're definitely not gonna do but I'm gonna go ahead and apply these lashes and I'll be right back these ones are on Mae West you see these on Jean Harlow the lashes were quite large back then but not this large come on who in the hell could walk down the street with these on and let me tell you something I will never ever complain again about how hard it is to put on a modern lash because trying to put wire lashes on 
It kind of looks authentic, but it's utterly ridiculous. There are lashes from that time that were very long and wispy, but they did not look crazy like this. So I'm gonna take these off. I'm gonna use a modern lash that looks similar to lashes back then. We have the final look, and I have to say I'm feeling pretty cute, and I think I'm gonna start wearing brown mascara. These lashes are the Red Cherry Lashes Birmingham, and they definitely look similar to lashes from that time. And now that I have the basis of the look on, and you guys have seen sort of how to apply the blush, lashes, brows, and all of that. Now we can just go through, I can do a blonde, I can do a brunette, and whatever else I can squeeze in, and we can just pop on the few color pieces for the color harmony looks. So take a final look of our Titian Haired Beauty, and now... Okay, I've been to the salon and I got my hair done and now I am the light red. So I've went ahead and followed the light red color and I've gone a little brighter on the green, so more of the other vintage green that I have. And I've used NARS Exhibit A to do a geranium blush. The reason I haven't done my lips yet, they call for a red orange and I really wanna use an actual vintage lipstick because I realized something. When I mentioned the artificial that they say, make sure you make the lips, even with red, not look artificial. The way that 1930s lipsticks were formulated, they almost just left more of a stain. I wanna see if we can get a less artificial looking red using an actual 1930s lipstick, and this is a red-orange color. I actually have three of these, that's why I'm gonna use one. And we're gonna go ahead and start on the top lip, and let's see if it actually, there we go. And we're gonna outline the top lip. I may use a lip brush just to make this look a bit more perfect. And I do not suggest people use vintage expired nearly 100 year old products. This one doesn't really have any smell, so I feel it's safe, but also 100 years ago, 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, they actually would use more preservatives and products. That's why these last longer. Again, I'm not suggesting that you use it, but they do still work. And people always ask, do you have any problems? using old makeup, so far just staining. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and line this and I'll be right back. Okay, after I had done my top lip and then following the Max Factor tutorial, we rub together and then you blend in with a fingertip. And let's see if this creates more of a stain. That is after blotting with a tissue and rubbing in with the fingertip and it really does create a stain that doesn't come off. Of course, it's never gonna come off my fingertip or my lips. My lips will be stained for the rest of the video, but it does say after you get everything rubbed in and not artificial looking, you would take, this is just like Lana lips, and go on top and then we'll just blot. I could see that looking very natural if you don't overline your lip at all, like I tend to do. It's almost coral at the end. That is quite pretty though. I really love the way that that looks. I forgot to mention that I also put green eyes because the light auburn hair would have green eyes and a light red hair. And I just wanna dupe that vintage lipstick so you guys can try this at home if you are this hair color. And this is Lisa Eldridge Velvet Morning. You're gonna get a lot more coverage, but that is so stunning. You can do the same techniques of just blending in with your fingertips, blotting with a tissue, and make it look as natural as possible to create that vintage 1930s stain. But yeah, I could wear this every day. I love this. I love the green eyeshadow. I actually put a rouge dot in the corners of my eyes. Now you would do this if the eyes were wide apart or if you wanted to brighten them, but I just used that Ruby Woo lip pencil. You would have used an orange stick dipped in a little bit of your rouge and you just dot that inner corner. On the cover, you can see it, it's quite strong. And if you see something like the movie Red Shoes, she does this ballet makeup with these huge red dots. It's so incredible. But if you were gonna do something on an everyday wear, not stage or theater, you would just do two very tiny dots. So I'm gonna keep that throughout the rest of the looks because I actually, I love the way that that looks. Okay, so I just wanted to test the color harmony theory. Before I put the blonde wig on, I went ahead and did the exact makeup that they recommend. Now the eyeshadow, they mentioned to match the color of your eyes, so to mix a blue and a gray. Well, I have a gray shadow here. I also have two different blue shadows. So you can see how bright this blue actually is. And then I just wanna show this blue on its own because it's almost like, in person, it's like a robin's egg blue. Now I've actually mixed this robin's egg blue with the gray. I went ahead and mixed the two colors right here. And then I just tried to match it with this color here. I used the Ben Nye color wheel, which is great for any of these actually, because it has a lot of colors in it. But to make this blue gray, here it is. And then of course we just stamp it on the lid 
and then blend. So this is also American Beauty lipstick, American Beauty blush, which was more of a pink magenta red. And I just wanna know what you think. Does this color combination work with this hair? I kinda think it does, so I don't know. Now I'm questioning everything. Maybe without the green. But let me put the blonde wig on and let's test again. I have to admit, I think that this coloring looks better with this hair color. I would wear blue eyeshadow every day, regardless of my eye color, hair color. I just absolutely love it. So if you're someone out there with blue eyes, wear blue eyeshadow, try it. I know it seems like something we never do nowadays, but I actually think it looks really pretty, especially with the blonde. Now I use the C Pomponne from Surat Beauty for my cheek. And I just went more pink, of course, like the American Beauty color that they call for. And this is Cocktail Hour by Shiseido for our lipstick. Now to get the full Hollywood realness fantasy, let's go black and white. I won't know till I see the edit how this transfers, but I have a feeling I'm Marlena Dietrich. No. <laughs> okay, now back into color. Ooh, I feel like Bewitched. So let's go ahead and move into the chestnut brunette. I think I've saved the best for last. To be honest, this would be my natural hair color. And of course, this is my natural eye color. It is crazy how the purple makes the eyes look more golden. If you are someone with dark hair and dark eyes, brown eyes, try purple eyeshadow. I also finally got to use black mascara. Throughout every one of these looks, it's been a brown mascara. For the blonde, they did suggest you could also use blue, but the blue was like a blue black, so I didn't think it would make a huge difference. The black mascara makes quite a difference. Again, the eyes look more golden. Now it mentions a bluish purple cast for the blush. And this NARS Corbatante actually matches, very similar to something I have from the 1930s, although that one is a little bit more vivid, but very purplish tint. And even as pale as I am, I love the way this looks on my skin tone. For the lips, this is a Bessemer product called Forever Red, and I believe they match this to a 1925 color. So that really works. It's quite vampy, but they call for like a dark cherry color, darker than the rouge. I love it. I love this whole look. It's very clear to me that I have to go blonde for a second, a platinum, and then I've got to go back to my natural color. It's been a while. I've been red for a while. I needed a change. Seeing this on screen, she needs to be a brunette again with her natural eye color. Now I just want to explain something because we have the chestnut brunette, which would be not quite black hair. It would be a bit more of a golden brown. This is pretty dark, but if you're going to go even darker, they have the Spanish brunette. You're not going to see a huge variation in skin tones throughout this book. So for the Spanish brunette, the black haired dark eyed type of brunette has either a deep, rich, swarthy complexion. What does the word swarthy mean? It's not the most beautiful way to describe a skin tone but basically it's a deep skin tone. So whether you are olive, you are caramel, you are deep chocolate complected, you will follow the Spanish brunette. But I will say it's not gonna be far off from this coloring, from the chestnut brunette. It's still a purple shadow and a deeper cherry lip. I would love to see some of you try this on. I'm just so pale. I would love to see someone do the Spanish brunette. Now, there's just a couple other ones I didn't get to. The light golden blonde. It's something if you have golden blonde, blue eyes, you can follow. The very last one is the gray or the white haired. I will look forward to being able to do this one day. I don't have a white or gray spray. I don't have a white or gray wig. Someone out there, if you have a gorgeous silver, gray, or white hair, I would love for you to try this color scheme. Now, to test the color harmony once again, and this theory of does it work with your hair color, your eye color, I really wanna put on the platinum wig and try it with this coloring. I feel like it's gonna be kind of harsh, so we will give that a try, but before I do, I need to see this in black and white. So, here we are in the black and white, and I really wanna see this compared to the blonde in black and white. I'm very curious how this comes up on the screen. I won't know until the edit, so I'll see it the same way you guys see. Okay, bring it back to color. The only way we can try this out and really see about this color theory. I have to try on the blonde wick with this makeup. Let me tell you something. I'm starting to doubt this color harmony theory because I don't think this looks bad. Now it does say for the blonde with the brown eyes that you could do a brown eyeshadow. This does not look bad with a purple eyeshadow. Maybe it was just a way to sell makeup. <laughs> Should I quickly see it with my, my hair color underneath? 
Let's do it. That's kind of cute. I don't know. Listen, I loved the green, but I think this, maybe this, this look just works for my face. That's why every hair color works. But yeah, what do you think? Let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you want to see, what decade you want to see. I have about 5,000 vintage makeup items, so I can pretty much share everything. And as you can see, I love trying on the looks. And also, if you try this color harmony on yourself, especially the ones I didn't get to, I would love to see them. Make sure to tag me, and I will see you in the next one.